Hi there, it's time for another Cigar Advisor panel cigar review. I'm Gary Korb, and if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, I don't know anyone named Anthony Weiner. Wow. Today, we are going to be That's smoking... That's not what your phone says. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Uh, uh, oh! Okay. Break out the Noxzema, he's been burned. <laughs> Ooh. All right, today we're going to be doing the uh, Temperance Whiskey Rebellion 1794 Jefferson. This is a four and a half inch by 52 ring uh, Rothschild. And it is blended with a hearty blend of Nicaraguan and Dominican long fillers. It has an Indonesian bazooki binder. Bazooki. And a high priming, very beautiful by the way, high priming Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. It's nice and dark and oily. And it burns beautifully. Joining us on the panel today, the usual suspects. He says he watches what he eats, but what he really means is he's binge watching every program on Food Network. Mr. John Pulo. With a fork in each hand. <laughs> May the fork be with you. Thank you. He once tried his hand at rodeo riding until his wife told him that she was tired of all his bullshit. That's good for a ton he's in. It's true. It's true. He was recently inducted into the Mile High Club, which is actually a cigar bar in downtown Denver, Colorado. Oh. <laughs> Jonathan de Torre. Oh, I tried. Uh, I tried. Still a virgin. Before. Well, anyway, oh, thank you, wow. thank you. Thank you. Um, this cigar symbolizes the uh, Whiskey Rebellion of 1791, which was uh, in, acted by Alexander Hamilton to pay back the Revolutionary War debt. Um, it's got a beautiful wrapper. It's dark and oily. Um, I know what I like about it is the wrapper only comes down to, um, it's just short of the binder. So you have a little bit of binder exposed at the end, which makes it light much better. I think that's a very cool idea. So I kind of like that. that it, it, it lights better that way. And it actually looks very attractive too, so I kind of like that whole thing. So anyway, Mr. Pulo, Sir. what do you think so far? We've got about an inch or so. Going on yeah, I'm, I'm really taking my time with this. You mentioned the exposed foot that uh, showcases a little bit of the binder. The uh, it's a, a thing that yeah, bazooki. It's a thing Rumocraft does with a lot of their cigars. Makes it easier to light. Also gives you a little bit of a, a chance to taste the flavor of the fillers and the uh, binder on on the on the immediate uh, lighting of the cigar. But one thing I noticed with uh, the Intemperance, the Whiskey Rebellion from Rumocraft, Gary talks about this being a high priming. Uh, Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. If you're familiar enough with some of the different uh, leaf types, Lajero is the high, is one of the highest primings of the tobacco leaf. A very thick leaf, a very dark, very oily, but also a very hearty leaf. So to go ahead and wrap it with this, uh, this is a full-bodied smoke for sure for 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, which is, I mean, oh, yeah. I'm enjoying this with coffee, mm -hmm. but it is a cigar, I say, that demands your attention, not only because a thick leaf like Lajero uh, is a real slow burner and you just want to keep an eye on it when it's going uh, but also you want to pace yourself because this is really a hearty full-bodied cigar Tommy yeah uh, well if you talk to cigar makers who have worked with a lot of La Hero, uh it's hard to work with this leaf because it is thick and it fills up especially when you use this filler it fills up the inside of the cigar and as a wrapper it's hard to stretch that around the cigar so perfectly but the Talk about perfectly. Is this not an amazingly constructed cigar, guys? Oh, yeah. My oh, yeah. God, oh, yeah. The draw this and everything. But let me start by saying there has been a definite, maybe over the last eight years or so, I'm kind of guessing, uh, a definite leaning towards very full bodied, wickedly full flavored, even stronger cigars. And it's become a very, very big niche amongst cigar smokers. Um, you look at what LFD has done with the Triple Aheros, mm -hmm. what Camacho has done with their bold cigars, the, the Ligas, what Steve Sack is doing. Right. I mean, look at uh, Christian Aroa used to get in fights with his dad way back because he wanted to take the company into full-bodied cigars, and his dad said, no, no one's ever going to like that. <laughs> so, which brings me to the boys at Roma Craft and Skip Martin and his guys have done something that I really admire, for real, and it's sticking to their core competency. Now, for you mental midgets out there, I might want to translate it. It means stick to what you do best. And that's what they've done. They make full-body powerhouse cigars. And they've uh, 
they've just stuck to that and they're better and better everything they make and I think that this one has raised Romacraft to another level because this is one hell of a cigar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, 100%. I, Roma Craft really knocked it out of the park this time. This is probably one of my favorite cigars that I've smoked within the past few months. So this is definitely up there. Um, it's got a ton of flavor going on. I mean, it, it's just got a, a, the complexity in this cigar, at least to me, is, is, is awesome. It's off the charts. It starts out with a little blast of pepper up front, and then immediately, I mean, it's like a snap. You get that blast of pepper, then it subsides. You get something a little woody, you get something really rich and earthy, I think, with a little bit of sweetness on the back end. And that just keeps on going up and down and, and, and switches and, and dips and dives all over the place. I mean, this is, a, this is a cigar that you really need to pay attention to or else it'll really, it'll really run away from you a little bit. But um, I mean, I, I think this is just absolutely fantastic from start to finish. Let me be the one to note that we've gone with Wiener and Woody in the same video, so we'll, we'll probably keep this trend. Hitting all the high notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a guilty So, uh, Gary, talk a little bit about construction because, you know, as we, we spend so much time talking about La Hero, this has a nice red, reddish hue mm -hmm. uh, to me and also um, very velvety in appearance. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, like uh, like us, you know, when when you when a tobacco spends too much time in the sun, it gets a little burnt. You know, it gets it, it gets kind of a reddish patina to it. And of course, because it's a lajero, it's it's at the top, just below the corona. Uh, it's going to get a lot of sunlight, which also makes it stronger. But I think you got into that a little bit. What what, what I what I'd like to say about the cigar? Well, first of all, I, I think. They've been amazingly consistent in terms of construction. This is the third one I've had, and plus I've seen all the ones that you guys have had in the box, and there's no soft spots. It's, it's, mm -hmm. the, the color is perfectly even in hue, and you can't even find the seam. I usually like to try to find the seam so I know which way to turn it, and I, can't even, I couldn't even find it on the last one. Because, of course, yeah. the um, more sunlight this tobacco gets, it also gets a little sweeter, produces a little more sugar. Yeah, I was so going to say, normally little, when, we, when we smoke cigars with sun-grown wrappers, I'm usually the guy that always says, it's got a very tangy taste, mm. especially because this wrapper spent so much time in the sun, it's, it's uh, amplified even more. So I'd say kind of a dried fruit, almost yep. kind of like, uh, I, I, I can't, like I can't put my finger on it. But, well, has anybody you know. gotten, because I really got, I smoked this last night too, I really got black licorice. Like, I, you know, when really? I say like yeah. Zambuca. I can see that. You know yeah, that, like, that. not so much for me. I get that. I like get more of a, flavor, I get more of a, really nice. to go on to yeah. your point of the dried fruit, I get more of a, and I've said this before, every time I have, I, I taste like a dried cherry note. Yeah. I, it, it's, I always have like a bourbon infused dried cherry that kind of comes about. Okay. That's kind of what I get in this. You know, if you've got some significant time in the aircraft, I think you're really going to enjoy yeah. the complexity that these guys talk about. You know, I'm starting to get into about the second, third of this thing, and it's settling into this nice mix of all the flavors we've been talking about here. You know, but really what it comes down to is slow and steady wins this race. This is yeah. not a smoke to be rushed. And it, it's very well balanced. And another thing that I caught on this too was um, yesterday we were talking about the cigar. Mm -hmm. You said, I don't find it very complex. And I said, well, I find it very complex. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what we mean. Now, everything's subjective here. And what I, what I liked about it, at least let me see if anyone else agrees, is that it was very well balanced in, in that I could taste all of the flavors at once or I could sign them kind of pinpoint which mm, one okay. I was sort of concentrating on. They were, like, they were all floating around in there. See, maybe you, know. maybe you guys don't find it as complex as I do because maybe I'm, my palate's a little scatterbrained. No, I so I, so I can't. So I do taste like more flavors at certain points along the cigar than others, and then it kind of dips around. That's what I mean when I, when I talk about complexity. I think that's what, what Gary was saying. Now you can pinpoint. You can really pinpoint flavors. Well, I'm saying, I'm yeah. saying instead of instead of actively trying to search for the flavors, um, I, that's that's how I interpret it. Oh, so, so they're they're blasting through love, you know. Like at certain like points, point. like at this point, I taste the chocolate. The next, you know, maybe you go down a little bit, and maybe okay. a more floral note comes through. No, that's mm. that's, that's, that's okay. fine. That's yeah. why I think it's it's a little bit more complex. Mm -hmm. All right, so why don't we wrap it up? What yes. we think, Gary? Well, I think it's a really terrific cigar. If you love full-bodied stuff. Uh, I hope you didn't get the wrong impression. It's not like super overpowering, you know, killer uh, strong. It's just real full. And if you like that kind of cigar, I guess we compare it to like the Liga Privadas, the Toya de Nicaraguas. If you're into that kind of thing, you're going to really, really love this cigar. And um, I highly recommend it, mm -hmm. especially in the afternoon or evening after dinner. Yeah. Good full-bodied pick. 
solid, solid smoke. Uh, as I said before, slow and steady wins the race on this one. Got a, uh, it was so well constructed, got a nice solid burn line I'm about halfway through on this Rothschild. And you know, even for a smaller size like this, it's going to burn for the better part of an, a full hour. So you're, you're certainly going to get a, a full-time experience out of this one. Goodly amount of smoke that pours off this one. Uh, the smoke's a little thinner, but still got a creamy and very spicy very element creamy. to it yes. that I've found. But thick, heavy, dark flavors all throughout that really grab your attention with a little bit of a fruity tang, like I said before, that, mm. you know, that hits the back of the mouth. <laughs> Much like you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Is that another fat joke? It's a fruity tang? No, I think I was going somewhere else, but well, okay, go ahead. Uh -huh. Okay. But uh, yeah, I mean the full-bodied gang is all there as yeah, far as the flavors and everything goes. So, really well balanced, uh, and especially even more so in this small size. Well, I am smoking this way too fast. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> it's your rush. I feel like Foster Brooks. There's an ancient rush. Uh, what are you ninety? Yeah, it's basically almost. Um, First, it's not Zima. Now it's Foster see, Brooks. Does it mean anything that I see Jesus on a white horse yes. coming by in a dream coat? Okay. Alzheimer's again, yeah. yeah, that's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you guys who love full-bodied cigars love, like, the Ligas and the Feral Pigs and the stuff like that, uh, the stuff that Steve Sack is presently doing with Sober Mesa and his new cigars, um, the Camacho American Barrel Aged, if you like those kind of smokes, this, to me, falls in that category. Full-bodied Wicked Flavor Complex you're gonna love this. And this is like John said, this is a cigar you really should take it easy, smoke, enjoy, taste each puff. I love this, this is a great cigar. It's hard to, great take, it's hard to take your time and enjoy each puff when it's just so damn good. That's the, that's the problem. It's just so damn mm -hmm. good that you just wanna plow through this and, and, and mm -hmm. just kind of <laughs> enjoy this. I guess, I guess you wanna enjoy it, but it's so hard to just put it down for a while. Um, Really rich flavors coming out through this. Really full-bodied. A ton of smoke production. I mean, this oily wrapper is really putting off a, a ton of smoke. Um, like I said, one of my all-time favorite cigars that I've smoked in the past few months. I, I, I really do think this is the one of my favorite cigars that we've ever reviewed. This is for the experienced smoker. I think this is very full-bodied, but like Gary said, it's not a uh, it's not like a blast your face off kind of cigar. At least not to me. But it is very full-bodied. So if you're a newbie, maybe steer clear. Wait a little while until you know you, you have a little bit more experience under your belt until you're a little bit more confident in your smoking. A little bit more hair there. A little bit more hair in your chest, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say, I got, I got a comment. If I think you guys agree. If we were going to give this like number ratings, like the Hoity Toity magazine give, <laughs> uh, this would score extremely high up in yeah. the 90s. Yeah. I, would I would be up there. I would be yeah. very, yeah. very disappointed yeah. if any cigar publication gave this anything lower than a 90. I would be yeah. extremely disappointed. Well, I would say we I'd put out a, uh, a toast to Skip Martin and the boys yes, at really. yeah, Roma Craft for really giving the cigar job. world and the fans yeah. something to enjoy and talk about. And let me finish by saying, if this is your first opportunity to try something uh, from Roma Craft, this is a, a, a great, let's call it a, a gateway cigar uh, to mm -hmm. get your way through the door. Uh, they put out some fantastic full-bodied cigars, and uh, this just happens to be one of the most recent from them, the Whiskey Rebellion from the Intemperance line from Roma Craft. It is okay. a nubber. All right, hey, you can yeah. buy the... <laughs> Whiskey Rebellion at FamousSmoke.com, so make sure you check it out over there. Please uh, keep following us at CigarAdvisor.com, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, all that other social media stuff, and we will see you next time. <laughs>